This week on Barking Mad, Nathan tackles one of the biggest dog breeds. He's attacked two dogs since being on the Prozac. I want to start to lead him around, get him to do what I want. And Elliot helps out a pup in need. She's getting worse. Her time is limited up there. Okay, so I'm pretty excited. We're on our way to Randwick right now uh, to work with Julia, Daniel and their Great Dane Moose. Our big Great Dane Moose is problem child of ours. He makes it really hard for us to leave the house with him. Moose is now known as the crazy dog of the street. Yeah, so. he lunges at gates, he lunges at trees, he lunges at butterflies. And we're out the front talking to you guys here because he doesn't like new people in the house. <laughs> He'll probably eat the camera crew. <laughs> If a visitor comes over, it's, uh, we have to be well prepared. We, we, we like to plan what we're going to do, how we're going to have Moose. Jules will answer the door, I'll hold Moose in the lounge room. Yeah. Let the person come into the lounge room so he's not in the small hallway with them. And then only when we're comfortable after about half an hour, we'll take the muzzle off. Not ideal. We just don't trust him. With Jules now having a baby being pregnant, we're, um, our priorities are changed and we have to get this fixed ASAP. How old was Moose when you got him? So he was 12 weeks when we first picked him up from Newcastle. Pure, pure very great Dane. And when you first got him and um, you went to socialise him, what was he like? Like, let's say, for example, at a dog park? He used to love the dog park and he got along really well with all the breeds, big breeds, small breeds. He was actually referred to as King of the Dog Park. King of the Dog Coogee. Park in Coogee. Um, why, why was he referred to King of the Dog Park? Because he was he just so it. social. He was just the one that stood out, just wagging tail, just running around the, the whole field, just playing with every dog he could get yeah. his eyes on. And what do you guys feel was your turning point? We just started to notice little things coming into his brain, like uh, runners, he would sort of prey drive and uh, run beside them. He'd nip at their shirts if they were flailing in the wind and jump up against them. And started out being cute, obviously, because he'd just be running next to this runner. And as he grew taller and taller, yeah. get closer and closer to their clothes and start doing, you know, a bit more aggressive behaviour towards runners. Yeah. So, what have you guys actually done to sort this problem? So we went to the vet specialist, and we were told that Moose is anxious and, and needs medication. So when they made that assessment, did they see Moose in all of these? Areas no, like, it, like did they come to the home? Did anything like that? Yeah. Really based on just a, a visit to their, their office. It was yeah. totally new for Moose and oh. and uh, okay. yeah, just based him on how his yeah. reaction was in the actual office. So where are you guys at with the drugs now? He's attacked two dogs since being on the Prozac and it, and also bitten, bitten one person, bitten person. Um, since being on the drugs. So it's wow. Yeah. Okay. It, it was at uh, full dosage. It was two and a half tablets a day. Okay. Yeah. So we're down to one tablet. What, what kind of money would you say that you've spent on his training, behaviour, everything so far? The medication dosage is based upon kilos, and when you've got a Great Dane, it, it's really quite expensive. Uh, thousands, it would be at, thousands. In, 10 thousand plus at the moment. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. With with the drugs. Ten thousand yeah, dollars. Sure. Easily. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god. Easily. I just don't think it's doing anything, and I think his problem needs more than okay. a quick. Fix. This this whole story frustrates me a little bit. Dog Behaviour Specialist, Elliot speaking. Hi Elliot, this is Renee from Rembury Farm Animal Shelter. How are you going? Good thanks Renee, how are you going? Good, just letting you know that we do need a little bit of help if we could. We have an American Daffy um, six month old puppy here. And she's showing a few um, behavioural issues. At this point in time, if she doesn't get some help, she might not have any homes to go to or rescue putting her, their hand up for her. She's not liking the bulldog that's next to her at the moment. It's, it's trying to fight with him through the wire and even when she's outside, she's not showing very much attention to the people that are wanting to adopt her. I was just hoping you could come and help her out. Sure thing, not a problem. Thanks, Elliot. Most people don't even do like the heavy socialising you guys have done, which is fantastic. You've got 
trainers out, you've put the work in, you've paid over $10,000 and you've gone backwards. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it is frustrating because um, as owners you sort of feel guilty for how your dog's been brought up because yeah. you feel like it's your fault. <laughs> yeah, and we were told by the same person who prescribed the medication for Moose, just avoid everything that triggers him. So avoid joggers, avoid dogs, avoid runners, avoid people with umbrellas, avoid rainy days. and Avoid, avoid life. Avoid <laughs> life. Generally like the opposite of what people are taught, like socialising. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like bring your dog to another dog, bring your dog to a person yeah. and yeah. socialising. So you guys were taught to avoid. Avoid yeah. everything. So as I understand it, there's a congratulations in order. Yep, Daniel and I are expecting our first baby later this year. So after we got that news, of course, the first thing on our mind was we need to get on top of Moose. If we looked into the future and there was no change in Moose, what would be your options? What you, would you be doing? There wouldn't be one. They're, they're kind of, we've, we've talked about them before. We've talked about rehoming Moose. We've talked about all the options and even our vet. He said, you've got to consider getting your dog euthanised if you're going to have children. And, and that's the reality of the situation. But it is, it is a reality. It's, it's, it's an unfortunate reality. But... Next up on Barking Mad. If I'm going to go introduce myself, I don't really know what's going to happen when I come outside. And how long has it been now? She's been here for a week and a half now. How long do you normally keep uh, dogs here at this facility? It is two weeks. She's getting worse. Her time is limited up there. He said, you've got to consider getting your dog euthanised if you're going to have children. And, and that's the reality of the situation. But it is, it is a reality. It's, it's an unfortunate reality. But... So I'm not going to let that be reality. <laughs> We're going to get on top of him today. And then your job is going to be maintenance. Yeah. So what I'm going to do to start off, I'm going to go introduce myself. All right? Good We're luck. going to do things a little <laughs> bit differently today than what I do with a lot of different dogs. I'm going to get you to put a long leash on him, which I've got right here. And that's going to give me access. Because my belief at this point is that his problem is more control. And if I get control of him, everything else will start to drop away. And then I teach you guys how to control him and everything else will start to drop away. But I'm just kind of educated guessing at the moment <laughs> and we'll see how we go with it. Okay? okay. Right. I don't really know what's going to happen when I come outside, but what I do want to know is that I've got access to the dog just in case something does go a little bit wrong. Now, even just having access to him is going to have him feel like I'm in control on a certain level. So what I'll do now is I'll, I'll head out there and my reactions are going to be based on what he does. So I'm just manipulating his body and just I want to start to lead him around, get him to do what I want more than what he wants on very low levels because I don't want to overwhelm him because Great Danes, as a lot of people would know, they get overwhelmed very easily so I've got to be sensitive with this guy. But at the same time, I don't want to be too soft either. So I use my body and the leash to manipulate what he does with his body and this just gets the brain to start getting into a bit of a follow mode rather than a, a manipulative control mode. And the little bump I do with my leg, he's got intention of going out in front of me and I don't want that. I want me to walk forward, him to walk forward and him stop without me having to do anything. I love it when a dog proves me right. So before I even think about coming to the door, so I want him to learn to be very respectful with this door space. Now if I can't get him to follow me and I can't get him to give into this space, there's no way that I'm going to get him to follow me and give in to me when he gets overstimulated when he sees another dog. Hey Hi, Elliot, how are you going? Good, how are you going? Good. Tell me about this dog. So, she is a microchip girl and she come in at six months old, so she's still only a pup in a pretty scary environment. Um, when she's up there, she's just showing some behavioural issues with some of the other dogs up there. Um, and it's got worse over time, as she has been in the kennels. It's not getting any better. So the biggest hindrance to this dog being rehomed at the moment is the fact that she's reactive to other dogs. She's quite noisy up there, which also turns people off. And then when she does come out here, because a lot of people are still interested in her, she doesn't pay them attention out in the yards either. She's so worked up about everything else, she just 
mm. doesn't really care about the, the hand that's... The girls were at their wit's end, they can't really... They feel that everything that they have done for her isn't really helping. And how long has it been now? She's been here for a week and a half now. And how long do you normally keep uh, dogs here at this facility? For a microchip dog, it is two weeks um, that they do have to stay here. Though, if they're coping extremely well in the kennels, we'll hold them off for as long as possible. Though, because she's getting worse, her time is limited up there. These intention of trying to push through again, I've got to disagree with. That little bit of eye contact, that's good. He's starting to acknowledge me. I want to try a trick. This is just a test that I do with a lot of dogs. I want to find out how the brain's wired. So if the brain's wired, as far as treat training goes, I shouldn't even need to say any command to get the dog to sit. So if the dog smells this and goes into a seat just like that, that means to me that this dog was trained to be manipulated by accident. I didn't say sit. Why did the dog sit? The only reason the dog sat is because he wanted the treat. He was actually taught with bribery rather than with leadership. Then when he learns to give in, he can then just follow whatever I want him to do. And if he's following, he won't attack a dog. If he's following, he won't attack a person. So I'm gonna take him out the front and see what this big guy's got. I've got uh, Moose here and Zeus there. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna do a, a walk by. So I wanna make sure he's behind me, I wanna make sure he's following me and I wanna be able to keep my eyes on his eyes and his head because that'll give me the information I need, whether I'm gonna disagree or whether I'm just gonna hold the leash really loose and let him follow. So I'll walk down now. Keep my eye on his head. Little flick there, just to disagree. And we'll go again. I'll get you to cross on this side for me. Coming up on Barking Mad. So he looks straight at his eyes. So that's me communicating to him back off into his bed. One of the main things I notice, as soon as you walk in, there's a complete lack of respect in terms of space. Great Danes are known for their enormous bodies and great height. They were originally bred to hunt wild boar, but the Great Dane of today have had their prey drive bred out. They are now gentle souls who get along with humans, animals and other dogs. So he started to react. So he looks straight at his eyes. And when he looks at his eyes like that, I know that he's starting to get way too tense. And it only takes about half a second for him to get from that fixation into that uh, crazy aggressive state that he gets into. So I'll face him to Zeus again. And I'll give him massage. And I'll do like an orgasmatron, I don't know if you know what that is. Uh, but give him this scalp massage, which helps him relax. And then I'll go down the body, nice, long, firm strokes. Nothing fast. If I do fast, it's that energy that gets him excited, and part of his problem, he gets overexcited, anxious, aggressive. That combination really for him is not good. So we want to do the opposite of that. Loose leash, massage, have him facing another dog in the state of mind that we want and connecting positive things to it. Now, when it comes to food, that was nice. <laughs> when it comes to food, he shouldn't expect it. If he's expecting it, then he'll feel an element of control. If he feels an element of control, that's when you'll start to get bad with another dog. But just having him near another dog, having him relax, not doing anything, that's training. Every second that goes by of a dog doing something is training, whether you're making it happen or not. This is good. We just got a good demonstration of how reactive this girl is, yep. particularly to other dogs, how easily she loses focus, yep. which is what we really need to be working on, okay? Yep. So one of the main things I noticed, as soon as you walk in, there's a complete lack of respect in terms of space, okay, with this dog. There's no eye contact. Um, she's basically disregarding you or anyone else that, that goes in there. Yep. And her focus is on whatever's most stimulating at that point, which was one of the other dogs, yep. okay? So what we need to do is we need to get her focus back on us and we need to help her to be able to calm down around other dogs in particular, yep. okay? 
so what we're going to do here, we're going to put the dog into its bed. And I'm guessing you guys, you can say into your bed and he'll go in there just fine. But if there's something that he wants and he doesn't want to get into his bed, my guess is that he just comes out of his bed, right? Yeah. Right. So what we want to create is a feeling where he actually gives in. So disregarding what happens in the environment, he's got an ability of giving in. So the training part, this can happen a lot inside of a home. So I'm gonna walk him over to his bed and I guide him with the leash, but then I bring my body around onto this side and I'll give him some bumps back in. Very gentle, just it's guiding, it's leading, it's controlling. I'm not saying anything to him, I'll drop the leash. So that's me communicating to him back off into his bed. And when it's done like that, you see he relaxes quite well, quite easily. This is him giving in. So I wanna test this. I don't know if he's doing this just because it's convenient and comfortable. Now I haven't invited him out of his bed. So if he steps out, I'm gonna disagree. So what I do is I drop the liver on the floor. And if he stays there, I do nothing. And you can see him looking at it. He's thinking about shh. He tries to get out of his bed a different way too. Oh, we're learning about this dog. And then I'll just use my fingertips to poke him back and no power, no pressure. And I've still got the liver on the floor there. And now I can walk right away. Right, because what we're creating is a feeling about this space here. It's not about me. So you guys understanding what you need to do here? Yep. Yep. Great. I think so. Awesome. So I'm going to leave this with you, and then we'll see how you go with it, and then we'll come back and address it if need be. Not a problem. Right. Okay. See you soon. Next up on Barking Mad. <laughs> That's too long. Comes in a little bit. A little bit harsh. So if this dog is focused heavily on another dog, we need to get the attention from the dog. Affection's a really important thing and also one of the most enjoyable things as well. But what we always want to do is keep it nice and relaxed and calm, and that way we help infect the dog with that same feeling that we have, okay? So within the kennels, when she's extremely worked up, how would you portray this in the kennels as well? So before we get to this point where we can give the dog any kind of affection and help infect them with that calm feeling, yep. we need to get the attention from the dog. If we allow the dog to jump on us, if we yep. allow the dog within our personal space to control us, yep. then we lose the ability to then communicate to the dog what we want and expect them to actually do it, okay? So in order to snap the dog out of that state of mind, yep. We need to use our body. So if this dog is focused heavily on another dog and trying to go for it, for it through the cage, yep. we need to get between this dog and the other dog and use our body to get this dog back. to back off. Okay. Then once we've got the focus of this dog back, we have the ability to help encourage and reinforce the feeling which we've now created, which is one of being more calm and relaxed. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for coming out and helping with her. Hopefully she'll be such a better dog and we'll definitely be able to use these tips in there. You're welcome. My pleasure. So go. He's leading the dog over nice, loose leash. Oh, now he starts to walk away. His body's confusing the dog a little. He's having to use too much leash, not enough body, but he gets there in the end, which is great. Dog understands, gives in, drops a leash, walks away. Beautiful. I'm a genius. That's <laughs> good. I don't know, I think he's gonna get up. He's sniffing around. <laughs> Oops, he's a bit of opportunity. Comes in a little bit, a little bit harsh. Overwhelming the dog a little. The direction of his body's still a little bit confusing to the dog, but now he backs him right off. Leash again and walk away is really nice. Dog understands. He's probably going to drop a treat on the ground here. There he goes, dropping the treat. That's pretty good. So the dog's not fixating on it, which is a really good sign. Oh, put a bit of telly on. And relax. And now the dog begins to really give in. This is nice. Wow, look at this. Yep. This is. Uh, been lying down for a while now. Well done, guys. You guys have made some serious ground just today. We watched what you did and you did a fantastic job. So thank you very much for having me in your home. Thank you really so much, Nathan. Oh, it was a pleasure. Um, I'm looking forward to, to taking it outside and having people over and 
yeah. knowing what to do with him and, and knowing his reaction will be yeah. just, just lying here on the bed. Yeah, just seeing him calm and relaxed after something so disruptive has happened to him is, is really, really amazing and unusual. We didn't think we'd ever see it. A highlight, definitely outside with Zeus. Zeus. Yeah. Um, yeah. His being able to actually lie down around another dog yeah. and, and show some signs of relaxing yeah. is something we, we're just not used to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and especially a dog Zeus's size as well. It's, it, yeah, just, it's great for us. It's, there's, hope, there's hope for Moose in the end. So I'm really happy with the result. And what I found with that session was that uh, really the dog was over medicated. The dog might have been a bit anxious before with some control issues, but it seems like the uh, medication caused the aggression and stuff like that. And now with just control and methods where we, we've cleared up the communication, the dog can now finally relax and give in. So all in all, I'm really happy and the dog's gonna live a great life. They've got a happy ever after with a new baby coming along. Socialising your dog from a very young age is really important. The more opportunity you get to do it, the more social your dog becomes, the more comfortable they are around other dogs. But if you get a dog that's older and they're not sure about other dogs, just make sure when you're approaching something like a dog park that you take your time, go slow. And when you go up to another dog, make sure you don't go face on, straight on, don't overwhelm, give the dog some time and space. So hang out nice and wide and go around to the rear, avoid those face-to-face -face confrontations as to not overwhelm the dog. Next week on Barking Mad. I've got a 17-month-old Border Collie. <coughs> he is absolutely insane. <coughs> when I take him for a drive in the car, he carries on like someone's trying to kill him half the time. He stresses Trish out and that affects our life together. 